See, I watched zero seconds of college basketball and then just like my bracket isn't even for money. It's like a work bracket thing with some prize at the end. But I, I like sure. went through and I'm like, shit, it's only number ones in the final four. And I was like, let me just yes. stick Ohio State in. And then I was like, you know what? A Michigan Ohio State final would be funny. <laughs> Sister Jean into Ohio State. Where the fuck is Sister Jean from? Loyola. Illinois, yeah. Um, Illinois rivalry. Wow. Yeah, who else beat Illinois? Every other state in education. (laughs) 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 Suck it, Chicago. Pull up, old crap, pull up. podcast recapping the plot of star wars canon for the casual fan this week we're discussing the last five episodes of season three of clone wars i'm brian carey and i'm joined by my co-hosts aaron laramie hey pal matt martirosian <laughs> and wesley don't kill him out of hate it's not the jedi way isaac i got the soup oh yes you do buddy <laughs> <laughs> March March Madness, you know what would have been smart is like a Star Wars sort of bracket that I I could have thrown together. But uh, it's not us. too late, you know. We no, could we could. We could oh. That sounds like a next week project. Well, because if it was movies, it would just be one line, and it would be Empire Strikes Back, and then it would be Circle, and that would be it. <laughs> we know where Aaron stands. <laughs> I think I think it's fairly unanimous here. Empire. Oh, yeah. 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 Phantom Menace. <laughs> but yeah, Phantom um, Medicine. Look, it's like the NIT. <laughs> oh, no, Revenge of the Sith would be the number two in the bracket. Revenge the of the Sith explains Fire. everything. That that's how I know what happens. I was like, I wonder if Anakin's gonna turn out to be mean, and then he does. Yeah, I like I like New Hope more than I like Revenge of the Sith. Interesting. I don't know if that's controversial. <laughs> no, Mar- 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 I feel like he's Revenge of the Sith guy. I, I respect it. Yeah, I no, I it's, it's, not, it's not anything against Revenge of the Sith. I just think it's, it's for me, like it's Empire, New Hope, and then maybe Revenge. I also, I like Return of the Jedi a lot as well. But. I, uh, I remember Return of the Jedi being my favorite as a child. And so I, I like put weight into so it's that. It's probably the worst. I put weight into and Return of the Jedi because <laughs> I really liked it as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't. It, it's one of those things like you kept that deal you know, when you were younger. Like you're not gonna change. Now. Yeah, like, sure. I like. Yeah. I like. Got that sentimental value. Absolutely. Yeah, I like. I like peeing my pants as a kid. So now when I do it now as an adult, <laughs> I just think yeah. back to. Yeah. I think back it's to like, the time. Like memory lane for Wes. I'm like, yeah. oh man, remember those days? <laughs> Wes is pissing no. his pants with rose tinted glasses on. <laughs> 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 it's like all memories. <laughs> uh, like, oh boy, I, I sure did miss this. Yeah, <laughs> it's like well, that pink piss. I should get it checked out. <laughs> yeah, take my pants off because the, the glasses. Wrong? The glasses. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. What's what's wrong? What's wrong with my urine? Oh, maybe I should take off these glasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why are my pants covered in piss? Oh, it's the glasses. <laughs> yeah. And the guy inside Chipotle is like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm sorry. They're like, sir, I'm please worried. finish your order. <laughs> like, sir, please take off your shades and doors. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> sir, do you need me to call someone for you? Just put on glasses yeah. and piss yourself. There's a number on your bracelet. Should I call it? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'll have double steak, though. <laughs> <laughs> so we record our podcast live on Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern on our gaming channel, twitch.tv slash carcassboys. And then on Mondays, we post the episode on YouTube and anywhere you can listen to podcasts. Uh... A fucking carcass boys bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) I just honestly, yeah, I'm just impressed that you can say carcass boys with a straight face while doing the pitch. 
Carcass and Boys. And we record it live on Carcass Boys. And I'm like, did yeah. you just say Carcass Boys like it was like a real company? Yeah. yeah. Carcassboys.biz. <laughs> We're like, yep, totally legit. Well, let's you think uh, I can put you think I, you think I can put this podcast on my resume? You could. I, I have. <laughs> Do you guys I have a question. Do you guys think that I would get in trouble? If I put this on my resume and they like looked at it, or do you think they'd be like, ah, at least he can let loose every now and then? I don't think they would care. Well, season three, mm-hmm. episode 18, The Citadel. Oh, shit. That's right. I have a question. Can we get a quick recap of all of it? Like, starting no, with Star like, like, or <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, what, like, what, what, what is Star Wars? <laughs> yeah. What's a Star Wars? The end. The end a long the time week. ago, <laughs> a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> that, do you want to do the recap, Aaron? No, I'm good. So what? What That's am all, I recap? My little buddy? scrolly thing was. It's all what, what's up, bro? Yeah, what, what? Do you actually want a recap of something? Real, real quick. Give me like a two minute recap. Go. Oh, of the episodes we're covering. You got a minute forty-five left. You, you haven't told me what's a recap. <laughs> You're down so, to one thirty. So Strono <laughs> Tugs works yeah, in Maz Kanata's yeah. uh, kitchen, right? <laughs> uh, what? <Strono laughs> Tugs works in Maz Kanata's kitchen. Someone that works with him gets uh, murdered, possibly <laughs> over some recipes. There was a big fight the night before. Uh, Strono Tugs is worried he's going to get framed for it, right? <laughs> But yep. he uh, he catches some sauce on the on the number pad on the outside of his uh, room. He's like, "Oh yep. man, it must have been uh, someone making his recipes or some shit." Yeah, somebody uh, knows the recipe. <laughs> so recipe he, for uh, that's yeah, that's the name of it by um, Land- Landry Quinn Walker. Um, so <laughs> he uh, he takes all his chef and his chefs and he decides he's going to have a cooking competition because of course the person who just murdered for the recipe book. Had to have uh, ma- would have to make something from the recipe book that they just saw last night. So there's these droids do. and these turrets that are shooting at them. Anti gravity cooking. Um, in the end, they figure out it's these uh, serving droids that just didn't like how they were treated at Maz Kanata's <laughs> restaurant. And um, Strono Tug stops them. I think his other chefs like die. One of them or two of them. <laughs> Time. <laughs> Time. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you for that. All right, so you end up at the Citadel after Shoto <laughs> Tugs kills some of his chefs. And what happened? Well, he didn't know it was the serving droids. <laughs> Wes wasn't paying why would, why? <laughs> Yeah. Can you do a recap? <laughs> I missed that. Oh, yeah. man. Why? Why were the serving droids allowed to compete in the in the chef competition? We should actually redo that episode because I took it down because of the audio issues. And I didn't want oh people to be God. like, oh, oh I should watch Cannonballs from the start. That's my just favorite bad. thing, yeah. man. Dude, I, I watched that episode like twice probably. Maybe, and I, um... I showed my dad and he was like, wow. And I was like, yeah, it's what me. Is I was like, don't worry, this will only be a few months. We're like six or so weeks away from our one year anniversary. Maybe we could just re record for our, our anniversary. Ugh. Ugh. Damn, we got one year. Holy shit. One year is bullshit, huh? How the fuck you tricked me in a year of this? That's crazy. All right, so season three, episode 18, The Citadel. So we meet a new uh, Jedi Master. His name is technically Evan Peel, but it looks like Even Peel. Um,. <laughs> He has been he, taken. He's even no, no joke there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he has been captured by separatists. He's being held in this fortress uh, called the Citadel. It is a high security detention center um, that is basically used for Jedi who, according to Obi Wan, have lost their way. <laughs> Does every sci-fi and like fantasy, like movie or like book series, have to have something have a called Citadel? Citadel? Yeah, yeah. Is that just like a consistent trope? Like in every, they're just that's like, where, oh, that's we where they put more big and fucking Citadel. Like, I guess. Yes. Citadel is where you put things: either weapons of very high power, uh, people that are bad, people that are good. The Citadel just has yeah. something Some of sort importance. of government. It's yeah, the Citadel exactly. of importance. It's just... Well, it's funny because 
the uh the guy who runs security at the citadel looks like someone from uh some sort of sci-fi media someone Mass of Effect. he looks like uh Saren, the bad guy from Mass Effect one yep uh his name's commander Sobek. But uh, he, he looks like Saren. someone from Mass Effect that also has a Citadel. Yeah. I uh, never played Dale, Dale Sobek? Dale Sobek. Yeah, like, like Huff and Sobek? Mm-hmm. Prestige Worldwide? Why? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a... Gotta have me my boats and hose. Uh, so the reason they've uh, kidnapped Peel is he has the coordinates of a secret hyperspace lane that connects homeworlds of the Separatists and uh, the Republic. Uh, basically, if it falls into either hands, they can kind of just launch a sneak attack. I guess the way their hyperspace lanes is you just punch something into the computer and they zip and zoom and bop. What if you hit a wrong button? <laughs> you might hit a planet. <laughs> is it like when you pronounce Diagon Alley Diagonelli? And you end up like in a fucked up place, and then some guys like you want to buy any death sticks, and you're like, no, no, sir, I'm a Harry Potter. Is that what happens? Or uh, asking so. for a friend? <laughs> Did I tell you guys that that guy's name is like Elon Scumbaggery or something? Elon <laughs> uh, Musk. <laughs> <laughs> like I knew he got that money through nefarious means. Yeah, he was selling death sticks on the side, and then eventually <laughs> he he's like, "What if I make a company sticks. that sells cars that run on death sticks?" And they're like, "No, use electricity." And he's like, "That's better." <laughs> yeah, dumb. <laughs> so Anakin and Obi Wan are going to go rescue Master Peel to get that uh, hyperspace lane. Uh, Ahsoka's told she is not allowed to come. But she oh. uh, sneaks along with well, just that's her just like those videos when you're not allowed to come. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Marty knows how they get in, but I, I want to ask you boys if you had to get past some droid security measure that uh, detected life forms on your ship, and you're in the Star Wars universe, how might you sneak by these life form detectors? I would totally, I would just use Jedi mind tricks on them because in this universe I'm a Jedi, of course. So I would You're just. You're going to Jedi mind tricks with too. droids? Can, yeah. <laughs> with their right. droid minds. Real easy. You go to a different planet first. Okay. And you kill like eight people. And then you just tape them around you in a circle. Easy. And that way the droids are like, oh my God, there's like a life form in this dead mass of bodies. But then they look at it and they're like, no, all those people are dead. Everything's fine. But you're in the middle of it all. So you you do you, you pull an Assassin's Creed and just blend into the crowd, except the crowd is a bunch of dead bodies. You take <laughs> exactly. Oh. You just use scotch tape and tape a bunch uh-huh. of dead bodies around you. Michael Scotch. So if uh, you playing along at home answered, freeze yourself in carbonite. Then uh, give yourself a Did pat you're on the back solo? and let, let me know because I'll send you a, a Cannonball's t-shirt. Oh, no, shit. I remember we're going to do things that I send people. All right. Um, we'll subscribe you to the Cannonball's I'll, I'll autograph one piece of graph <laughs> paper and send it to you. Nice. All right. You get Carcass Boy's honor. Autograph Make sure you paper. actually got it uh, right. But um, So they, if, <laughs> they if, all freeze themselves in carbonate. So... Anakin, Obi Wan, a few clones, and Ahsoka sneaks into this mass carbonite freezing chamber, and uh, they get to be real awkward when they wake up. (laughs) What are you doing here? (laughs) Nailed it. (laughs) Uh, So they they get to the planet. They unfreeze themselves. They seem to suffer little to no effects from unfreezing in carbonite. They're not blind for the. They can't see, buddy. I can't see, pal. (laughs) <laughs> you know, that doesn't happen. Boba, that where? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see, pal. Is that you, Chewie? All right, so um, they have to like free climb this cliff face to get in. Uh, oh they shit! Par- lose... Hardcore parkour. <laughs> they kind of lose a shit ton of clones in their their infiltration. So yeah, clone falls and it hits some sort of like electric mine and now they know they're there now Saren from mass effect one knows they're there Uh, 
They do end up reaching Master Peel pretty quickly. And he says, oh, the other half of the intel is with my captain. He's uh, being held somewhere else at the Citadel. Captain Key. Close. So they make their way to uh, where the captain's being held. And, captain Rex. Uh, it is Captain Tarkin. He is, as uh, in Grand Moff Tarkin. As in Grand Moff Tarkin. Hey. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> oh, man. You guys remember when Grand Moff Tarkin was at the, uh, Grand the tasting? Grand Marf. Grand Marf Tarkin. <laughs> you guys remember when Grand Marf Tarkin was at the tasting for Strono Tugs' food competition? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Grand, Grand Marf Tarkin. <laughs> It was <laughs> fucking Grand Marv Tarkin. It was a tube of eighty Snokes. <laughs> okay, what else? Is he still talking about the episode? <laughs> <laughs> and that, do you want to buy any portions, Sky, or quarter portion? Do TDS TikTok? They have commercials. You heard the United States of Al. Oh, that's with Hank from Breaking Bad. I can't tell Hogan. Yeah, oh, everything's all over the place. Yeah, and I, I, I think, I think, I think, I think Alf's in it as well. Because he's like Al, but. <laughs> Honestly, that would be a better show. <laughs> a better show if Alf was in it. The show's it's just the it. fly episode of Breaking Bad, but with Hank. <laughs> it's, just edited, it's just edited episodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, He's just like, like in his like... house, just chasing a fly. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes to work and has a regular day, and you're like, "Wow, that was inspiring." <laughs> I uh, I misunderstood Sarah because I I haven't watched all of it, so I was watching through. Sure, and we were trying to figure out where I had left off, and she was like, "Oh, did you get to the fly episode?" And I I hadn't yet, and I thought when she said that she meant it's like a really good. Landmark episode. <laughs> so I, I watched it and so I was like, like, oh no, so I like, hated this episode. Like, so you're like, oh, I, I've been dating this girl, but I just realized that she talks like a 1990s street gangsta. And you're like, oh, all right. You're like, yo, you get to the fly episode yet? It's wicked fly. And you're like, yeah. no, I haven't seen anything super fly yet. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> you had the episode on the dope? You're like, you mean the dope episode? No, I haven't seen anything for Super Great yet. Sorry, boys. Super Great? That shit was dope. Like, no, do the drugs, you idiot. <laughs> it's the drugs, you idiot. Back to uh, uh, Tarkin. Tarkin, obviously a Republic captain at this point. <laughs> Fuck. I um, forgot that's what we were talking about. <laughs> Obi-Wan and Tarkin have a little debate about whether they should split up the group or stick together. Um, Obi-Wan wins that debate and they split up. Um, we get an evil look from Tarkin at the camera that never is paid off, I thought. Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors. He does a little gym from the office. Yeah, yeah, he does a gym from the office, but he looks <laughs> like Tarkin. So <laughs> it just looks evil. <laughs> Yeah, just a resting bitch face. Like, that's not a look, that's just how you look. Uh, so Anakin, Ahsoka, and Tarkin uh, sneak off into some tunnels, and Obi-Wan and his squad of clones, uh, he is with, he's with Eden Peel at this point. Uh, they, nice. they sneak off into some ventilation. Um, and this episode continues into season three, episode 19, Counterattack. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so Something. the uh, whole plan, Anakin's squad hid their escape shuttle in those tunnels they're escaping in. They're going to go grab it and meet Obi-Wan at a different spot. I'm really with Tarkin here. I'm not quite sure what the sake of splitting up was. Mm -hmm. um, That's probably why Tarkin turns to the dark side. He's like, <laughs> fuck these idiots. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Commander Sobek, a.k.a. Saren, uh, he is AKA reporting. And Dobek. <laughs> AKA and Dobek. He is reporting directly to Count Dooku, uh, who's just like, "Hey, uh, don't fucking lose those four Jedi you have, or three Jet, yeah, four now, because Ahsoka's there. Um, otherwise, I won't be very happy with you." 
<laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to be real angry. <laughs> Otherwise, sad. <laughs> or else, upset. So, in these tunnels, Anakin's kind of sneaking around on rocks and stuff, making sure they're not, uh, like, flanked or anything. And Tarkin's not happy that the Padawan's in charge of this group now. Um, they hit this dead end, and Ahsoka, because she snuck into the group, didn't know that the plan was to blow up this wall and make it to another tunnel. So they get, like, pinned down for a bit. Uh, but that doesn't matter, because Anakin eventually shows up. They blow up the wall. Um, now, R2, of course, is in charge of this shuttle. He has to improvise because um, the droids found their ship. And he's... <laughs> I actually probably could explain this in the first episode, but he has some reprogrammed battle droids reporting directly to him. Reporting so they got their, their goofy battle droid voices like, Sir! R2, sir! And <laughs> he's leading them. So he does oh. this trick where they pretend to take him into custody. So because R2's left the ship, uh, Obi-Wan and his group get recaptured and taken into custody, and then they do this whole switcheroo thing with the battle droids, and they, they end up getting Obi-Wan out. Not a ton, I think, happens in this episode, besides sneaking around. Um, there is that scene mm. already mentioned in the vents, where they trigger some alarm, and the vents like start cutting each other off, and a droid just gets cut in half. Um, Tarkin and Anakin are like, oh, we agree on a lot of things. Um, when Tarkin says the Jedi Code prevents them from going far enough to win the war. And He's like, Anakin's the Jedi like, Code prevents you from having sex with somebody that you're supposed to be protecting. And Anakin's <laughs> like, I agree! <laughs> it does yeah. prevent it, bro. Get out of my head, bro! <laughs> <laughs> so, they kind of like buddy-buddy, and like Tarkin's like, oh, finally, a Jedi I respect. And Anakin's like, you're a great military leader there, Tarkin. Can I have your resume? <laughs> it's like kind of funny that Tarkin, Brian Allen, wants to know is this. Like, he doesn't, he hasn't aged. That's the same. Like, yeah, he's just old. But to me, he's a little old. And, uh, there's like a 20 year difference between this and like a new hope. Like, can yeah. you imagine me like, a little younger? Number two, you look so young and vibrant. And wow, <laughs> you look so right. <laughs> He's proud. <laughs> From Austin like Powers, guys. I don't think I've ever heard your Dr. Time. Evil impression. I'm in. Yeah, I'm I, did, I even did the little pinky. I did, <laughs> for all the viewers watching, check out the little pinky, man. Yeah, if, if you're listening on Spotify, uh, fast forward to... I edit this, so I don't know when the timestamp is. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> to, who knows? Here's what I would say. If you're listening on Spotify, you know when it happens. Go to that point <laughs> in the YouTube video. You need me to do, fucking do everything for you? Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. You're the end of the damn video. <laughs> Get off your high horse, you. Yeah. I already recorded and edited. What the fuck else you want? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're becoming very needy, our, our 10 viewers. So, <laughs> you know, do something for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we're going to take this podcast to the top, boys. Berate our viewers. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's always worked pretty much all the time. <laughs> Share it with a friend if you want to be berated. With <laughs> <them>. <laughs> yeah. If you want us to you belittle your friends. Unappreciated, unimportant. <laughs> Share it. Listen to the Cannonball <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> Brought to you by Cargit Boys. <laughs> oh, man. So... The uh, two groups meet up finally, but their shuttle is destroyed. Uh, we lose that guy Echo from that clone training episode. He was with them. Anyway, it's funny because these clones, they do have some some distinct uh, like armor colors and paintings, but in the action scenes, you can't really tell who it is. So they have to be like, oh no, Echo, when they die. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that was Echo <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> it's like when you play Last of Us 2 and they try to humanize the enemies by giving them names. They're like, <laughs> Kevin, no, you just had three kids. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> the triplets. And I just shot him in the face for literally no reason. <laughs> I was like, I could sneak yeah. by this guy or just pop him right now. <laughs> like, you only got one bullet left. <laughs> I only have one crossbow left. 
So Clone Wars, I, seemingly every episode has it. The look, I'm that guy from that one time moment. Um, could have been Echo, could have been Tarkin, <laughs> but <laughs> um, their shuttle's destroyed. Echo dies, and they call Plo Koon to uh, extract them. The but, need a Plo oh, Koon. Man. We don't get extracted until season three, episode twenty, Citadel Rescue. Extraction. Oh. Oh, so I was gonna say the extraction. <laughs> so I was so sure. I, mean, you, Aaron, Aaron, I was right there with you, buddy. Uh, oh, I, I like, like this. We were on the same page. I'm like, this is gonna be, you know. This is gonna I be like it, you guys right, guessing but... the names. I'll, I'll let you Plo guess Koon the next. Does one. an extraction? He goes to a dentist's office, and it's like Plo Koon is like, hmm, this is the bad tooth here, right? Is <laughs> <laughs> the lightsaber? so their plan is to rendezvous on the planet's surface but kind of all the way on the other side on this uh, little island in the middle of a lava pit <laughs> that's smart <laughs> that's the rendezvous point Comfy. so the way I explained it because it makes no sense but Great. if I were going to argue <laughs> that it's not the most ridiculous plan um, there is a blockade on the knots uh, volcano y side of the planet. Smart from the So it may be smarter people. to approach it from the other way. And no citadel over there. So, you know, maybe it's just the more convenient pickup so they don't get shot down. Yeah, they're just like, we're just going to take it from behind. Yeah, just take it from behind. Uh, that's sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so they, uh, they start their trek across the planet. Uh, Saren, aka Commander Sobek. Uh, send some Anubas to track them, which are these... Oh, fuck. <laughs> what do, you, do you want to guess what they are? Anubas? Yeah. I think there's a um, in the name. Yeah, they're like dogs. You got it. <laughs> but they're uh, Egyptian. Mm-hmm. Like Anubas? Yeah. <laughs> yep. That was my... Yeah. That was my, that was my ears. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of these they got little corny. hyena things. And they look kind of vicious and big. Yeah, and Brendan Fraser's like, I don't know what's going on, but oh. Imhotep better not fuck oh, with me. Oh, I fucking love mummy balls. <laughs> oh He's like, why does it have to be snakes? <laughs> <laughs> I hate snakes. This is a Nazi thing. Yeah, why is it always snakes? I, I live in the jungle. I slip on slippery yeah. rock. And yeah. I'm like, I'm so confused. Is this George of the Jungle Balls? Or yeah, you're like Brendan Fraser. Watch out for that tree, pal. <laughs> <laughs> and then The Rock's the Scorpion King in a spinoff movie. Um, and they're like, let's just CGI The Rock's face on the scorpion body. That'll make sense. <laughs> it's 2006. It's perfect. There, um, there is a The Mummy ride in Universal Studios. And sure. there are these little videos with actually Brendan Fraser in them, in like while you wait in line, and that is supposed to be the canon that bridges the gap between the Mummy One and the Mummy Two. Oh, is this weird documentary <laughs> you watch while waiting for the ride of the um, Mummy I at Universal I Studios? Thought, I thought it was videos of him on the ride. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> And he's like, oh shit, I, I remember this scene. And I'm like, Brendan Fraser, what's Completely going on? He's like, and I'm like, Brendan Fraser, what are you doing? Remember so, the little snap point thing? You guys remember that time? If uh, if you do want to fully immerse yourself in the mummy lore, you better get to Universal Studios soon before they shut down the mummy ride, which hasn't been relevant for 20 years. It's coming back. We're going to do a new mummy. They just did. Yeah, though. you gotta. You just gotta do uh, do some research on a little Dianetics, and you can get into the new mummy. I think that one's a thinker. Do you, do you guys know what that is? Dianetics no, I, is the, I don't, the book I, of Scientology. It's the book of Scientology that they worship. It's Tom Cruise is a Scientologist, and he was in the new mummy okay. by L. Ron Hubbard, my favorite author. Yep. Elrond from Lord of the Rings. Elrond from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Lord Elrond? Lord yeah. Elrond's a Scientologist? Now it makes yeah, sense. Agent, he founded Agent Scientology. Smith. That's why Agent a- Agent Smith Lord Elrond was like... That's how he yeah. lived so long. Mm-hmm. He's like, take a look at all this Scientology. This also, Scientology is actually close to the Jedi stuff with midichlorians, right? Doesn't Scientology have some sort of midichlorian count? They have they have thetans, I believe is what they're called. <laughs> but they're the spirits of aliens that died like 
There's something like Lord Xenu drove a ship into like into Earth, and they got like sucked in. You you've never seen this the South Park about this? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 that's, about that's, that's, I'm like it. grasping at straws here, but Aaron's like, I got it. Oh, oh dude, I, I, I yeah. Um, uh, I just think Aaron might be a secret Scientologist, man. It's cool, bro. Like, I'm not mad. I don't give a fuck about what you believe in. I just never took you for a Scientologist. It's so hilarious, I can't not remember. Like, <laughs> It's like those frats where you're like, oh, I'm doing it for the networking. Aaron's just in Scientology for the networking, but really they just throw huge <laughs> yeah. banners. It's great opportunity. Yeah. I'm a yeah. big Volta fan. <laughs> it's uh, like, yeah, Tom so- Cruise comes through and does a speech every couple months. It's really Once so Aaron's fucking- level 10, they'll send him a, a classified Travolta video. Exactly. Ooh. Yeah, I get a I get a special box signed by Tom Cruise that he stood on before. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's short. That's a good one. Because he's not very tall. Yeah. So like uh, when he does films, he has to yeah stand on boxes. Yeah, you so, see anything about uh, when he when he shattered his his ankle because he does his own stunts because he's oh, a yeah, he's, bag. he's a crazy person. Yeah, and like he jumped across a, a thing and shattered his ankle and then ran out the rest of the scene. They're like, you hurt yourself, right? And he's like, yeah. I shattered my ankle, but I had to run through the rest of the scene. Otherwise, the people wouldn't believe it's real. And they were like, but it's a movie. And he's like, yeah. But like, yeah like, they, had, they had to know it was real. They're like, why didn't you use a stuntman? He's like, no, it's got to be me. Otherwise, you know, the fans, they're like, oh, that's fake. He's I, like, I heard <laughs> he, he basically doesn't get as much shit as he should for being a Scientologist because he does shit like that. Like, he's the hardest working person on the set. He, oh, like, yeah. yeah, he is. Totally. <laughs> And like, dude, we can easily he's... have you a stunt double. You're like a fucking A-list actor. <laughs> like, Hollywood could cancel you. him, but the directors are yeah. like, honestly, he's great to work with. Too nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like presence on, on the set. Yeah, like, oh, fuck, fucking Tony just spilled coffee. He's like the bus boy, and Tom Cruise is like, I'll mop it up. And you're like, why is Tom Cruise yeah. mopping it up? You're like, oh, he takes care of everything around here. He does all his own stunts. <laughs> <laughs> There's a spill over there. And they're like, where the yeah. fuck is Tom Cruise going? This he died. Cruise have a lot to do. We, we don't Cruise even life. have to have to get him a trailer. He just kind of makes his own little fort under the the fucking yeah. <laughs> food table spread and a little yeah. cloth hanging over the side. Just, just give him some pillows and he's ready to go. Like, what are all the other actors saying? Like, oh, Tom Cruise built them trailers out of driftwood that he found <laughs> down the street. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is that giving that boy up to? Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Fucking Tom Cruise. Where the fuck are you? Know, if, ever, if you guys ever need me to explain Scientology, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Anubas, <laughs> they, uh, they're wolf by things. Right? Jesus Christ. Hey, man, you're really staying on topic because that's twice now I've been like, what the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> they're, uh, they're tracking our, our group of Jedi and Tarkin. Um, on the way, there's there's some more conversation between Anakin and uh, Tarkin. Uh, Anakin's like, "Hey, you should really be careful about like speaking up and talking back to the Jedi. It may it may hurt your career." And Tarkin's like, "Actually, uh, the Chancellor's a big fan of mine, so my career is going to be fine." And Anakin's oh. like, "The Chancellor's yeah, the my best big friend big too." Finger. Like, <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like Anakin's like he's my best friend too. <laughs> <laughs> I I know so much in common. <laughs> yeah. He's a very elderly man. I met him as a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Age doesn't matter, obviously. Anakin just loves old men. He does. Anakin's like, yeah, my girlfriend's 32. They're like, how old are you? He's like 12. <laughs> uh, excuse me? Well, they just assumed he was making it up for for most of his life. He was like, "Yeah, my my girlfriend's fucking twenty four. Yeah. yeah, my girlfriend back on Coruscant, she's twenty four. <laughs> and it's <Fred's> like, <laughs> yeah, what do you, mean? you have no girlfriend, and you're not racing in the pod racing championships." He's like, "Screedo, bleego, gleeblo, I'll show you. I'm racing <laughs> the pod racing championships, and my girlfriend's a twenty four year old princess." And they're like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> <laughs> but, and he was right the entire time good for him <laughs> the Jedi and the clones are fending off some Anubas and droids uh, Master Even Peel is mortally wounded by an Anuba does he survive? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> In his dying breath, he what? gives. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I guess that alcohol really got to him. <laughs> if only friends and Frazier like were there. Looks like average Joe's is forfeiting the bold strategy. <laughs> so, in his dying breath, he gives uh, Ahsoka the hyperspace route. Um, again, he only has Terrible. half of it. Tark in the other half. And he's he doesn't like, say anything to like, he's not like, hey, tell my wife I love her. He's like, uh, coordinates G7. <laughs> Basically. Five. And he died, and they're like, oh. Did, did you like how long that took? He's just like, I'm telling you, so I need to give you this information that's crucial to, the, to winning this war. And I'm like, are you sure? Maybe, like, I can go get it. And he's like, no, it's you. And she's like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> so Ahsoka's like, I wasn't even supposed to be on this mission, really. So, again, last chance. Okay, tell me, what are the coordinates? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know this pen is out of ink. <laughs> she runs. I can't remember the much. <laughs> yeah, you gotta imagine to travel across the galaxy, it's more than a few numbers. <laughs> They make it to the extraction point. Commander Sobek, a.k.a. Saren, shows up. And he's like, I'm going to stop you. And he's pretty quickly killed by Ahsoka. <laughs> I got you stopped. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like the fucking Indiana Jones guy with the sword. And he's yeah. like, like, shoots him. Yeah. He's like, yeah. And she's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basically. Um, and he's like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Glow Coon extracts them out of there and they get back to Coruscant and Ahsoka and Tarkin were given separate orders. Tarkin was told only give the coordinates to directly to Palpatine. Ahsoka was told only give them to the Jedi Council. Fuck. So Yoda's like, I'll go talk to Big Awkward. Daddy Palps, see what see if we can come up with an agreement. I was like, I'll trade you fake coordinates for the real ones. But he's like, I'll also give you fake coordinates for the real ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, perfect. All the ships fucking smashed in different planets every single time. The end of Star Wars. And that's it. All right. You boys want to take a crack on what season three, episode 21 is called? Negotiation. Yeah, we'll Palpatine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, negotiations. That's yes. a good one. I'll, I'll go with that one. <laughs> it's called Padawan <laughs> Lost. Oh, damn it. Why the fuck would I guess that? So I uh <laughs> my first note here, I just I just started rather than oh, here we're on this planet. Here are the characters. I just listed like a planet and four characters. So here you go. <laughs> Felucia, Ahsoka, Anakin, Plo Koon, Grievous. Scene set. They are attacking a separatist base on Felucia. Plo and Anakin are attacking the front. Ahsoka's going out the back. Or into the back. (laughs) (laughs) You're not even tired, but into the back or from behind. (laughs) But Ahsoka's taking him from behind. So Ahsoka is captured by a Trandoshian (laughs) who is planning on hunting her for sport. Oh shit! Fuck the Argonians, man. I hate Argonians. <laughs> Y'all boys know this. We've done a year of this. The uh, the, the Trandoshians never play a good guy in the Star Wars universe. I'll I'll point that out. Neither do Argonians in the um, Skyrim universe. They're always bad. They're like, hey, uh, I lost my job at the fishery, and I'm like, I'll give you <laughs> some money. And they're like, well, now I'm gonna kill you. I'm like, but why? I'm like, what? You have like a toothpick. <laughs> like not toothpick stab. I'm like, I have magic fire hands. What are you doing, bro? He's like, yeah, I can I'm yell. resistant to poison. I'm like, like, I can use can poison. like dragons do. I'm like, dragons yell, and so do I. And and you're just like, <laughs> I don't have a job. Um, what 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 game is this? Who who came up with this game? Who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> so Ahsoka wakes up and she is dropped on some islands. Um, nice. And she's pretty quickly founded by. Some other Jedi younglings who were once captured on some missions. And they're basically like, 
give up hope. Just eat and hide. And she's it's like, the most dangerous game. <laughs> it really is. Oh my god, the most dangerous game, Star Wars edition. It is. Who would yeah, you it's want? the most All dangerous right. game. All right, so let's say you, let's say you're in the most dangerous game, and you're the hunter. Who would you want to hunt, and who would you want as your sidekick? Like anyone on the planet, or from the most dangerous game? Anyone? No, no, not from the most dangerous game. It's a book that I don't remember any people in it. I didn't Star know how, how well versed you were in that literature. There. Yeah, I'm not. I'm <laughs> not a Scientology Aaron. I'm just. Uh, I remember <laughs> being a book. So, um, yeah, anybody in the Star Wars universe, you can pick one person to hunt, and one person is your sidekick. Did you say hunt or hunt? <laughs> Um, I'm gonna I think, haunt. I think, I think with the context, can I haunt, haunt you? You <laughs> really do, bro. I think in the context, hunt makes more sense. But haunt, sure, why not? The, the easy way is to say, charge. All no. Wait, Star Wars universe? I thought it was regular life. No, dude, Star Wars universe. Why the fuck would it be regular life? I don't know. I was just thinking about killing Joe Buck. The regular life podcast. We're a Star Wars podcast. <laughs> this is in regular life balls. <laughs> We're not the regular boys. Well, you can't hunt Jar Jar because he's a Sith Lord. He'll he'll wreck your ass. <laughs> um, Porkins. <laughs> Wait, you you hunt Porkins, or you, hunt or, you Porkins. Up, or you team up with Porkins? So who do you team up with? I team up with <laughs> Porkins' <laughs> wife. <laughs> Miss I kill Porkins. Porkins, and then I marry her. <laughs> <laughs> Is that I'm, still technically I'm, being up? I don't think we yeah, can do that. Porkins. <laughs> 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 I don't know how we top the thing where you get Porkins' wife to help you kill Porkins, and then you fuck Porkins' ex-wife now that he's dead. I don't know. How widow, that. widow, not, not ex. Wife. <laughs> how did you get better than that? Unless you make him sign divorce papers while he bleeds out. <laughs> yeah, his own blood. <laughs> and he just signs them, Porkins. <laughs> So Anakin's uh, super upset that he has lost uh, Ahsoka because there's like fucking no trace of him. He keeps ordering Rex to check the same area again, again, and <laughs> Plo Koon's is like, uh, "So she's we not really... there." He's like, "Check it again." <laughs> yeah, that's exactly well. Look what happens. again. <laughs> He's not in the poison sea urchin farm. Well, look again. <laughs> He's not in my thoughts. Well, think again. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's so, a good joke right there. <laughs> thanks, bro. Plo Koon uh, commands Anakin to leave, and he's basically he tries to console her. He's like, "Well, if if she's you know well trained, which she is, she's gonna work it out. She'll be back." Ahsoka's with those Jedi younglings <laughs> that have also been captured. There's one uh, named Khalifa. Uh, oh, that's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, Brian. Keep going. I'll leave it. I'll leave it. What's so funny about Wiz Khalifa? Yeah, what's so funny about Wiz Khalifa? <laughs> you don't want it. You don't want this smoke. Me uh, thinks oh, that yeah. uh, Khalif Wiz Ooh. Khalifa's not that funny. <laughs> There's four Padawans. Ahsoka convinced them to fight and kind of figure out a way off. Um, she teams up with Khalifa. Who nearly like, kills... oh, Captain, my Captain. <laughs> That's right. How good was Dead Poet Society? All right. Dead Poet Society or Stand By Me? Which one? I like Stand By Me more. Yeah. But... I'm going to go Stand By Me. <laughs> That's how it was more than I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Stand By Me is pretty good. <laughs> like, we found a dead guy by a train. They're like, we're children. <laughs> I'm like, wow. That movie. <laughs> he's a hot boy. Mary's a hot wife. Khalifa nearly kills one of the hunters out of hatred. Ahsoka's like, why don't we grab his blaster? And she's like, they just deactivate them if we take them. Um, so 
And they're like, oh shit. So Ahsoka ends up killing one of them. And Fuck. he's like on a hunting trip with his dad. And he's like, <laughs> my son. <laughs> <laughs> my boy. You killed my son. And he like shoots and kills Khalifa. My boy. Oh, my son. They're like playing jovi- jovial music as they bring back as Harry Potter returns with the port key in Cedric Diggory's dead ass body. And they're, like, <laughs> and they're like, Harry Potter, he returned. And Harry Potter's like, <laughs> and they're, like oh, they're like, all right, like, Dan, you, you got to really handle it. They're like, up. Harry, chill out, bro. Like, uh, did you lose? And he's like, <laughs> And they're like, oh shit, Cedric Diggory's dead as fuck, dude. <laughs> he's like, my boy. Then the, the musicians are like, oh fuck, read the room. Read the room, guys. Read the room. <laughs> Fucking Harry Potter. Oh, Jesus. So, <laughs> um, Khalifa's dead. Um, and we go into the next episode, season three, episode 22. After Padawan lost, what do you guys think this episode's name is? Padawan found. It. Padawan found. <laughs> That's a good guess. Padawan funeral. Uh, look at my Padawan. <laughs> return of the Padawan. <laughs> look at my Padawan. Oh, the return. You're home. Revenge of the Padawan. No, it's <laughs> it's called Wookie Hunt. So they plan to attack. Um, she. So Ahsoka meets up with the two other Padawan. Is like, ah, oh, shit. Mia Khalifa died. And uh, <laughs> oh, 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 we did it! We did it, bud! You stuck that one in there, bud. You were trying to get that by. I did it. Like I loved it. I didn't even think to go that route. <laughs> oh, I thought that's what you were doing. Yeah. No, that's what I was implying. Like, no wonder you guys didn't laugh. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. I was great. like, that's Mia great. thinks Khalifa wouldn't do that. Uh, yeah, I didn't even hear that part, and I'm like, hey. <laughs> Try not to come challenge, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's where our head was at. Uh, that's where I my actually, head's always at. I actually feel kind of bad come. for her. She she was on a podcast I listened to. Like, all she does is sports shit now, but she was sure. only in the industry for, like, two months. That's it. She was, like, 21. That, went to Miami. Well, it's true. Like, like, well, it's, this sucks. She had that one video... And she oh. got like super famous because she's wearing like a turban, and people freaked yeah. out because she was supposed to be like a Muslim woman, and people were like, oh, and then like was on the news and whatever. And the, like, imagine you know, like, I'm gonna do this like twice to like make some money or you know whatever. If the fuck. It's like and there's she's young shit all forever, the time, like, and then there's this one woman in a turban, and the media freaks out. Yeah, honestly, yeah, honestly, honestly, I wish that she would teach some business courses about marketing because I'd be a hundred percent. I'd go there. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. "Tell me more. What sh- what crazy shit should I do to make a name for myself?" Because I'm I'm trying to make it in the business world. I want to stand out. What do you think? <laughs> and she'd be like, "Oh, you're Cuban. You need to wear a Fidel mask yeah. when you do Bigger the podcast." There, and I'd be like, "That doesn't make any sense." There's uh, she'd be like, "No, trust me." <laughs> there's times she's like a good sport about it now, but a lot of times she's like fucking not happy about it being brought up but on the podcast i was on they uh they have their producer who does all like the recording shit and uh it, it's like a goofy podcast but they asked her to bongo and like pat his belly and then she does it and she's like i can see it now be a khalifa bongo small peruvian boy <laughs> <laughs> uh we should try to get her on this podcast <laughs> we should we- I don't know if she's a Star Wars fan. I'll, I'll I slide into her it DMs. I'm sure she has those open. I, I can yeah, see it now. Be a Khalifa. Be a Khalifa guzzles cannonballs. <laughs> <laughs> guzzles. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I know what the, I, this episode, the name of this episode should be the 90 minute don't come challenge or whatever. <laughs> However long this episode ends up being. I'll post it on Pornhub. <laughs> Yo, I'll take anybody's bet right now over under. It gets more views on Pornhub than it does on the actual <laughs> 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 
<laughs> well, you know that you know that comedians that that's like, oh, I find a drunk girl and give her water and get her home safe. Like he doesn't actually post porn. That shit is too. Funny. You know, we joked about advertising on Pornhub, but why not just post the video? <laughs> yeah, we're cannonballs on YouTube, Twitch, and Pornhub. <laughs> we're, we're <laughs> cannonballs may already be taken, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, you're right. There's definitely been some. I don't know. Maybe not like this. <laughs> right. Holy shit! So yeah. oh, Ahsoka shit. meets with the uh, other Padawan. And they have a new plan. Hey, a ship drops off new prisoners to hunt uh, every day. Let's just bum rush that prisoner ship. And uh, we'll take that over and fly away. So smart. That doesn't work because when they fight in the cockpit, they destroy some systems and the thing crashes. So out of the rubble crawls a very familiar Wookiee by the name of Chewbacca. Chewy Baca. Chewy Baca uh, is the first name Chewy, last name Baca. <laughs> so he was the only prisoner on uh, on the ship. You know, I guess a, a Wookiee's a, a big prize to hunt. Um, he tells Ahsoka, "Hey, Kashyyyk's nearby. Maybe I could build a transmitter from the wreckage, and I could ask my buddies for some help." They uh, they build a transmitter. But it doesn't seem to find a signal. So their new plan is to Jedi mind trick one of the pilots of the prison ship to get him to call in a speeder. And they're going to go to their little floating base on this hunting planet to try to take that over and maybe fly off this planet. Um, so they, they do that. They Jedi mind trick this guy, fly up. And they put up a fight at first. But remember, they have no guns. Uh, Chewie's beating people up because he's bigger than a, uh, what, what is it, Trashtonian? Trandoshians. <laughs> I'm a, tra- a Trashtonian? Like a Trashtonian. Like a trash- that, sounds, custodian? that sounds like uh, <laughs> like derogatory towards Trandoshians. It does, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah trash- I'm sure the Trandoshians listening to this podcast is going to be real upset. And we'll have to issue an apology to Trandoshians. <laughs> and Trashtonians. So, just when we think hope is lost, a bunch of Wookiees show up to the rescue. And the uh, bounty hunters from that one time where they trained the farmers to fight against the pirates, those bounty hunters oh, that shit. helped them I remember, train. I remember those guys. That guy from that one time. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> Here's that guy from the one time. Fuck. Um, so, Ahsoka is in there and she battles the, uh, the dad that killed Khalifa. And kills him, and makes. And he's like, "Oh, now me and my son are dead." (laughs) My boy, Mamma Mia. He's like, "A mama, that's a one of spicy a pizza." (laughs) And then she kills him. He's like, "Oh, meatball." (laughs) She makes it home (laughs) and meets with Anakin, (laughs) who's like, "Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. You got you got kidnapped. You got taken. It's all my fault." And Ahsoka's like, "No, thanks for training me. If it weren't for you." I would have died. That's the end of season three. I think easily the the best season so far. They killed off a oh definitely a couple of kind of lame Clone Wars characters. Um, Finally, I, looking at the timeline, it starts to be in order. The first three seasons are fucking all over the place. This episode happened before that one. It's it's wonky, but uh, season four starts to so- be chronological. What's up, Aaron? Do you do you feel like that plays a part in like the success or failure of like the first couple? Because you're like this is like the first season that's kind of like gotten their shit together. You feel like at least storytelling wise, and they have like kind of a consistent narrative or whatever. But do you think that them telling things like randomly out of order benefits like the show in the long run, kind of? Or I guess Marty, that's a question for you too. Like, why go out of your way to have this thing like jumping around all over the place and then be like, oh, but it was good. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't get why. Like, does it serve a purpose later in the show or something? I, I, for me, it does. But then why, like, go through all the trouble like this or something? Like, yeah, I I don't know about early <laughs> early Clone Wars, and maybe it's something I should research into, but it, 
It seems like there is a lot of episodes that they were just like, let's throw it and see if it sticks. And then maybe later they were like, oh, let's tell a little prequel story of that one episode that people liked or or something like that. Yeah. Maybe they made the first season and then, you know, not from a lack of ideas, but maybe building off some of the good ones, they went back and made prequel episodes to each one. Yeah. Um, so it's it's hard Just to say. Weird. I I have a I don't know this for a fact, but I think Clone Wars had a rough start, um, like on Cartoon Network and stuff, where it maybe was canceled once or twice, and then oh, it, yeah. okay. it picked up, and then like finally canceled, never got a finish, and then just this past year, Disney Plus had it, and Filoni got to finally finish <laughs> with season seven. So it, mm. it had a rocky time for sure. Oh, it's going to finally finish. I was going to say, they let Filoni finally stop edging the whole time. <laughs> He's just been sitting there and just edging. He's that like, was oh, the Filoni, the Filoni longest cum challenge. Well, I mean, Filoni was watching the uh, the yeah, cum challenge. Cum challenge so. Yeah, of course he was. So yeah, I, I would say the first three seasons, I think, um, I talked to Marty about doing like a top ten story arcs where it's like the three episode stories and you know sure. I think there's a couple essential ones in there like the Mandalore one and and shit like that um but there there was a lot of trash yeah. mm-hmm. I, I love that. Did, did you notice when when season seven came out I don't know where it's this but when season seven came out they they had like these are the 20 episodes you need to watch before season seven. Oh, did that they? one were before season four well that's that's good i'm i i did hit the point where like i'm excited sure? each week yeah. to to watch them do you find yourself like watching these characters like because i've probably seen all of them and i have a different view of anakin like do you have that view of any, any characters where you're like oh this character is like cool or the character is more important than i thought I'd like to see this character in my match um i I don't think any of them have really been developed any further than what I thought of them yet. Like Ahsoka's completely new, of course. <laughs> so I like Ahsoka. Yeah. Um, yeah I don't know if anyone's Ahsoka. given me anything new. <laughs> Stupid. So far. <laughs> I, I think Obi-Wan is a, a bit more of a rule follower, it seems. But um, I, actu- I actually had a thought um, mm. about Obi-Wan. Ooh, congrats. <laughs> He's the <laughs> wow. He's he's Ahsoka's <laughs> Jedi grandpa. So when she sneaks on the mission and they unfreeze the carbonite, and Anakin's like, "Oh, hey, Ahsoka, what? Ahsoka's here." And he's like <laughs> reprimanding her. Obi Wan's like, "Oh, you were the same way." Like the yeah. Jedi grandpa role, I yeah. think, is is cool to see. Anakin, don't remember, don't you, don't you remember when you yeah. were the same? And Anakin's <laughs> like, what the fuck did you say to me, Grandpa? And he's like, like okay, I, I drank a whole <laughs> cup of wine. I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> and Hi, it, Grandpa. I don't know. Like, I just <laughs> went off on this train of thought. Like, even if Qui-Gon didn't die, I feel like Obi-Wan could have trained Anakin and just having Qui-Gon as Jedi Grandpa around. Just be like, oh, you're being too hard on the boy. You're like, oh, you go, you go to grandma's yeah. today. <laughs> Obi Wan's got a date. <laughs> <laughs> Duchess of Tea. Obi Wan's got a date. <laughs> so it made me think how many of these uh, Jedi grandpa roles play out in in the Clone Wars universe because I, I think the whole Jedi structure is is interesting to to learn about because you don't get like a ton of it in the prequels like you know it exists but it's kind of this side thing going on yeah also i think you only see the ones that are actually brought up in the films so you you really you really have like your jedi structure is obi-wan's kind of too young to be a master but qui-gon jinn dies and then he's like i promise i'd train anakin and you're like I guess, but like you don't see the other side. When things go right, you really don't see that aspect of it where it's like, I trained this guy and now he's pretty solid. He can be a Jedi master. It's like Obi-Wan was a Jedi master because he killed Darth Maul. Yeah. And his master was killed. And then he's like, <laughs> I'm going to train Anakin. They were like, eh. 
Fine. Well, and it seems like because of the Clone Wars and all that shit, there were a lot of Padawans that were maybe rushed to be Jedi Knights sooner than they should have been. Yeah, yeah, they they weren't ready. It was just kind of like, uh, you're good enough. And it's like, I haven't had the full training. You're like, nah, you'll figure it out on the job. Because <laughs> if you remember, <laughs> Obi-Wan and uh, Darth Maul were not technically the first lightsaber on lightsaber, but like the second lightsaber on lightsaber for like two or three hundred years. So they were like, yeah. oh man, you're the only ones who've been Just in crazy. a real fight. We gotta make you a knight now. Yeah, sorry, dude, you're in charge. That's what we always say on the Cannonball Podcast. Right in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, come. Hold up, old crap, hold up. <laughs>